So seven or eight years ago, I made a Queen Anne style coffee table for my niece's wedding. When I finished the coffee table, I took it to my grandma's house to take pictures of it. And she was really impressed with it. And, and every once in a while, she would bring it up and, and talk about how much she liked it. So several weeks ago, I decided to make one for her, for my grandma. And it's been several years since I made the first one. I've acquired some new tools and gotten better at a few different techniques. So I thought I could make one nicer than the first one that I did. So I bought a bunch of cherry. The original one that I made was made with alder. I started by slicing up some boards to make the tabletop. And I went back and forth, flipping them around, rearranging them, trying to get them to a grain pattern that I liked that had the color match as, as close as I could get. The color wasn't perfectly matched, but it was, it was fairly consistent. So I glued that together, put on a bunch of clamps and some calls, and let that dry overnight. I wanted to dress this one up a little bit more than the first one that I made, so I wanted to do curved stretchers. And the way that I decided to do that was by making bent laminations. So I took some more cherry and sliced it up pretty thin. And I picked one board that had grain that I really liked. And I decided to take slices from that board to be the face of each of the stretchers. Once I had those laminations all sliced up, I then ran them through the drum sander to get them all to a consistent thickness and to get glue ready faces on each lamination. I made forms out of MDF and then using DAP Weldwood plastic resin glue, I applied glue in between every layer, taped them together in the center just to keep them from shifting around, put them on the MDF forms and slid them into a vacuum bag. The long stretchers ended up working out pretty well. It was the short stretchers that I was pretty disappointed in, and I ended up throwing those away. The replacement short stretchers I made by just gluing two boards together to get a thicker board, and then just cutting the curve into the face of the board on the bandsaw. I used a trick I learned from a Roy Underhill video to lay out an ellipse on top of the panel that would become the tabletop, and then I just used my jigsaw to cut that out. My jigsaw cuts pretty well, but it doesn't leave a perfectly clean surface, so I had to clean up the edges of the tabletop with a spoke shave. I added my brand on the underside of the table and then sanded it all to 180 grit. I then routed a profile along the upper edge of the tabletop. Once that profile was routed in, I flipped it over and just did a slight round over on the underside. And then I cleaned up the profile with sandpaper. I used some Charles Neal blotch control before applying the stain. And the stain was a General Finishes Georgian Cherry gel stain. And between those two products, it did a really good job of evening out the color differences and giving the table more of a, a traditional Queen Anne appearance because it's always a, a darker wood, usually a, a mahogany. After spraying on a few coats of lacquer, I went over the table with some 400 grit sandpaper and some soapy water to even out the surface before applying more coats of lacquer. 
that just makes for a more even sheen. For the legs, I started with a big plank of 12 quarter cherry and sliced that up into a few boards that were three inches square. Squared those up on the joiner and the planer. And then cut them to length. With this type of table, it's the legs that takes the most amount of time to make. I laid out the mortises and drilled out a lot of the waste on the drill press. And then cleaned up the mortises with chisels. I don't do a lot of mortise and tenon joinery in my normal work, but it's good every once in a while, I think, to test yourself and make sure you still remember how to do traditional joints. Once the mortises were done, I mounted the blanks on my lathe and then proceeded to turn a pad foot at the bottom of each leg. This was a new technique for me that I hadn't tried before, but I really like how it turned out. With that done, I took the leg blanks to the bandsaw and with the pattern traced on two sides, I proceeded to rough cut these blanks to the shape of the cabriole leg. I then taped the off cuts back onto the board so that I could cut out the opposite side. Once the cuts were done, I removed all of the waste, and now you have a rough cabriole leg. And this is where the real work in making a cabriole leg comes in. You have to clean up all the bandsaw marks and smooth out the surface with a spoke shave, and then mark out some lines to kind of guide yourself to produce even curves from one face to the other. So you basically start with a four-sided leg, turn it into something of an octagon, and then from there make it a continuous curve from one face to the next, using chisels and rasps and spoke shaves, and then finishing it off with a card scraper, and then finally a sander. Probably half the time I spent on this entire project was done just on the legs. Maybe even a little more. With 
with that done, I was then able to mark, cut, and glue on the transition blocks to the edges of the knee of the leg. This is where it'll transition into the stretchers. Once those were dried, I could do some more cleanup on the legs and then fare the curves on the transition blocks so that it became a seamless line from leg to transition block. On the previous table that I built like this, I didn't do transition blocks at all, and I think it does make the table look a lot better with the transition blocks, as opposed to not having them. For the sanding, I used a interface pad along with some Merca Abernet paper to be able to follow the contours of the legs and get those finished to a nice surface. Then it was basically rinse and repeat for all four legs. I went through a similar process on the stretchers, cut tenons on the ends of the stretchers to fit into the mortises on the legs, and then I routed a groove on the inside, on the upper inside of each stretcher. This is where the steel Z-clips will go that will hold the tabletop to the stretchers. Once the stretchers were all cleaned up, I went ahead and glued the base together. I applied the same stain and blotch control to the base, and then gave the top and the base several more coats of lacquer. Then I centered the base on the underside of the table, and used a bunch of steel Z-clips to hold it in place with brass screws. I didn't put them all the way in the grooves that I had cut so that there was a little bit of wiggle room for seasonal expansion of the top. With the base mounted to the top, I cleaned off the dust and delivered it to my grandma. She was very surprised, and she seemed to really like it. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more of the things that I do in my shop, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.